You talk about Russia pulling back its forces, but are you prepared to say to me that you are willing to pull back your forces away from Luhansk, away from Donetsk, and leave those cities in the hands of separatists whom you label terrorists? Uh, we are not talking about the withdrawal our troops because it is our territory. But with respect, that, that is in the Putin seven-point plan, that you will pull your forces back so they can no longer shell Donetsk, Luhansk and other cities in separatist hands. I consider the Putin proposal as the sign for shared responsibility for the ceasefire and the, the appeal, the request for the uh, illegal armed uh, group to uh, sign up to, to participate in, in the ceasefire. The uh, detailized peace plan should be uh, most probably signed today in Minsk. And that is the uh, basis for the political uh, dialogue under the ceasefire. And you cannot find out still there. No danger for this ter territorial integrity or sovereignty of my country. There is no any one word who uh, give uh, who, who put it under the doubt. And but isn't the brutal truth, Mr. President, that you are going to have to accept a ceasefire agreement which leaves the separatists in control of large chunks of your territory because you were losing the war on the ground? And when Mr. Putin said, apparently to Mr. Barroso of the EU Commission, just a couple of days ago, I could take Kiev in two weeks if I wanted to. He was simply indicating that Russia has the cards in its hands. You do not. Uh, look, Russia has 1,200,000 army troops, one of the most modern army and weapon in the world. And with this logic, the same way like uh, Russia can take Kiev, Russia can take Warsaw, Vilnius, Riga, Tallinn, uh, Bucharest, or any other cities, if we would not be united, if the whole world do not demonstrate the solidarity with Ukraine, if we allow this way of treating the current situation, and the present situation, I said, never ever it happened. Never ever we give neither Kiev nor other cities. And uh, for the situation on the ground, uh, when I became a president, it, ha it was less than three months ago, the terrorists and separatists control the full territory of Donetsk and Lugansk region. Now they're shrinking their territory by two-thirds, only one-third left by control. And this is the direct success of Ukrainian armed forces. How confident are you that a lasting ceasefire in eastern Ukraine is now within reach? That's one of the most difficult questions. So I'm absolutely not confident. So I'm confident that Ukraine as a state and me as a Ukrainian leader, uh, doing everything possible thing to have a peace in my country. I do my best to stop the war, to stop the massacre uh, against Ukrainian civilian and Ukrainian forces. Steve, it seems to me you were in Iraq, mm. and uh, you know what does it mean massacre, and you know what does it mean war. And you know how difficult it is for us. And this is not just a question of the economic difficulties which is exist, social difficulties, and danger and risk. This is the uh, possible the real humanitarian catastrophe. If the war will continue, if more and more Russian troops be on my territory, if uh, people from the Donetsk and Lugansk can be suffered from this attack. And from this point of view, I think that the uh, initiative of Ukraine, supported by the whole world, supported by people of Donbass, because 100% people of Donbass, 
wants a peace. But I want now to focus particularly on what has happened at the NATO summit, what you hear from Western leaders, how you feel about the international response to the crisis in Ukraine. One of your most senior foreign ministry officials summed it up for me a couple of days ago in an interview. He said the one word he would use was weak, a weak response from Ukraine's friends. Uh. I doubt that anybody told you after this NATO summit, maybe it was before. It was just before. It was just before, because the final statement of NATO before was weak. And just because of we have a negotiation with the leaders of the member states, the final resolution of the summit was much stronger. I never ever before, I have a long diplomatic history and I have a long experience of diplomacy. I never ever see that any country was a, will have a such level of support as yesterday have Ukraine on the Commission Ukraine NATO. And this is not just a, a verbal support. This is, was a practical steps with the financing the four trust fund for the logistic, for the cyber defense, for the social guarantee for the soldiers who, after the uh, war. And uh, the, uh, yesterday, every single country of NATO uh, financed that. Also very important that first time after the conflict was started, on the bilateral level, we have a very strong statement about the military technical cooperation, including non-lethal and lethal form, uh, uh, supply of the uh, uh, military equipment. Let, let me push you on that. You appeared to be suggesting yesterday that specific countries, member nations of NATO, were prepared to offer you precision guided weaponry. Is that true? Yes. Which nations? This is confidential information. Well, there uh, are only a few nations inside NATO who would be able to offer you precision That's munitions. Exactly. exactly. We so are talking not about not a, not the a, most sophisticated militaries in NATO. We're talking about the United States, the United Kingdom, just a few others. For the country, please, Steve, even if it is a hard talk, no comment. But uh, this is the first time when Ukraine were proposed the sophisticated weapons to defend the, their territory. And you should understand, this is not just for the victory in this war. This is just for helping us to create the European security. Because this is not a war for Ukraine. This is not a for Ukraine, war for the Ukrainian territory. We don't have an illusion, Steve, that the uh, NATO soldiers on Ukrainian soil would be defended their freedom and democracy. We count on us. But the military, financial, military to technical support is vital for us.